No, first things first, armor. You don't exactly have armor in this thing, like the one in heroes and generals. 15mm and unfortunately that means 50 caliber can easily chew through you. And it's 15mm in pretty much every single angle. Yeah, even the turret. I'm the better 20mm thing of bitch. Hey guys, it's Jamie and welcome back to a, a new part of the series on Furious and Generals but it's War Thunder. And why do I say it's a new part of the series? That is because the old part of the series is where we are playing the American faction of all vehicles, tanks and planes alike. So that means, we are moving out of the American faction, we are now playing the German faction. Yay, Germany! Now just, just a quick little note, we are starting with the second tier light tank of the, tank, of the line of tanks in Euros and Generals. Because uh, War Thunder unfortunately doesn't really have a Pencil 1, which doesn't really surprise me because the Pencil 1 in Euros and Generals are armed with 2x MG13 machine guns. As well as uh, the Pencil 1 that does exist in War Thunder are the Flag Pencil 1, as well as the Pencil Jaeger 1. And unfortunately, um, I did give a thought about it as to whether or not I should play the Pencil Jaeger 1 or the Flag Pencil 1 as alternatives, but eh, after a while of thinking, I decided maybe not. Because Panzer Jaeger 1 is a little bit too far of a stretch because of its firepower. And the Flag Panzer 1 20mm. At some point I'm going to be playing the SDKFZ222, so it's pretty much just me playing two 20mm auto cannon anti air for, for one series. But anyway, starting the series off, we are playing the Panzer 2C. And this is not everybody's cup of tea, even before the shell changes the armor mechanics and all that in Euros and Generals. It's not a big surprise though, this thing isn't exactly the most strong armor. But anyway, how does this fare in War Thunder versus the one in Heroes and Generals? Now let me break it down to you and I will show you the difference between these two games representing the same thing. Now first things first, armor. You don't exactly have armor in this thing, like the one in Heroes and Generals. 15mm and unfortunately that means 50 caliber can easily chew through you. And it's 15mm in pretty much every single angle. Yeah, even the turret. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Small arms machine gun will not throw through this, but anything 50 caliber and above will definitely punch right through this. And uh, it really doesn't take much to knock you out because you only have three crewmen in here. All you need to do is knock out the gunner and either the loader or the driver. So yeah, armor's really not looking too good. But the good news is that at least the turret isn't really lacking too much. 20 mm right here. They're sitting underneath 15 mm right here. If anybody's dumb enough to shoot this. But if they're dumb enough to shoot this, this is 14mm, 14.5mm, sitting on top of another 14.5mm of armor. So the turret is not something I would shoot, not to mention there's literally nothing in there apart from the commander and it's a lot smaller than you think. <laughs> but unfortunately, the real question is, who the hell shoots your turret when they can just shoot your hull? Now the mobility on this thing, you have 140 horsepower engine for something this light, which is actually not bad. That allows you to go up to 44 km an hour. And uh, reverse gear is actually not too bad, 18.2 km an hour, which will be very useful given how this gun actually performs. Just one thing to keep in mind though, you unfortunately have a narrow set of tracks with no visible upgrades. So yeah, driving off-road can be a pain in the ass in this thing. Hey guys, you know I just noticed while recording this breakdown? Look at the driver's feet. <laughs> it's past the transmission. <laughs> like bro. You okay, man? It doesn't look comfortable at all. And then moving on, the setting point of this thing. This is a 20mm KWK 30 cannon. And I'm probably triggering some PTSD right now because because when you're playing reserve and you go up against this thing, this gun will definitely tear your ass up very easily. But here's the good news though. But in case you've been sleeping under the rock, this is the round that will be firing the Panzer Granite 40, high velocity armor piercing tracer shell that pans up to 48mm of armor. That's right. A few updates ago, Gaijin decided to finally, finally nerf the German h rounds. If you don't know what I mean, let me tell you that the Panzer Granat 40 round used to pan up to 64mm of armor, which is actually pretty scary because that is pretty much reserve tier armor level, which is at the very most is 50mm with little to no angle whatsoever. So that means this 20mm can really tear up enemy tanks in pretty much most ranges. 
Unless, of course, you come up against the Valentine Mark 1. Now, something to keep in mind that he isn't really mentioned here is the fact that uh, this thing is a little bit like an auto cannon, but instead of like the French autoloaders, where is it? Like this guy, the M4A1 FL10, where the rounds are in here, and then he just automatically load into the gun each time you fire. The Panzer 2C operates off a magazine. And unfortunately, the magazine size is only 10 rounds. So that's something you need to be extremely careful of. Because as you can see, your reloading rate is 6.4 seconds. Keep in mind that I'm actually running Expert Crew on with maxed out Tank Commander Leadership as well as Weapon Reloading. And I only managed to bump it down to 6.4 seconds. It's actually not too bad, but in a battle rating where everybody can fire up to around 3 seconds or 4 seconds per shot, yeah, you can get caught with your pants down very easily in this thing. So my advice is that if you only have 10 rounds in the magazine, always single tap or short burst your 20mm. Do not hard spray this 20mm. Otherwise, other aspects of the gun, you can carry up to 180 rounds of ammunition. I just say bring everything because this thing is an automatic gun and you're gonna burn that 180 rounds very quickly in this thing. As well as, uh, not very often do you actually get ammo rack in this thing. At the very most, it's your crewman that died. Anyway, but you can guide us negative 9 gun depression, which is good. Not the best, not the standard negative 10 gun depression, but it's not too bad. It's, it's not, not too terrible or anything. Targeting speed 13 degrees a second, which is excellent. And finally, gun stabilizer vertical. But uh, unfortunately, do not think of this thing as like the Sherman gun stabilizer that's effective around 20 km an hour or so. This thing's only effective around 8 km an hour. But hey, at least the good news is that I don't have to wait for the whole tank to stop completely in order for me to stabilize. And so they have the Panzer 2C in War Thunder. And how does this fare against the one in Heroes and Generals? If it weren't for the fact that Rito has been screwing around with the different ammo types, you know, the APCR, stock AP, and then started adding all these other different shells that nobody gives a shit about, as well as changing some of the armor, the armor mechanics and all that, that ended up breaking tanks in general, I would have actually liked the one in Heroes and Generals better. And the reason is because Heroes and Generals is a little bit more survivable. Like granted, the 20mm doesn't really hit nearly as hard. But the one in Heroes and Generals, I don't have to worry about them penetrating my upper front plate and then just sticking out two out of three of my crewmen. And if you remember seeing my Panzer 2C video in Heroes and Generals, yeah, that's the survivability right there. I'm just driving around, just annihilating everybody, every single light tank I see in my Panzer 2C. But anyway, that's all I gotta say about the tank. Now let's take this thing out of the battle, and please, HFAP, don't fail me now. I'm kind of more worried about it. Oh, the VT, they killed them. The VT.
Yeah, get that, get that thing out of here, man. <laughs> I don't even want to call this shit because I think he's one of my favorite vehicles to play. I'm the better 20 mm slinger, bitch. It was just nasty. There is someone that I do not want to see. Hit on. Like this. And then, oh, then this one worries me.
Someone give me a break. Extremely careful with my shots, and whatever we we lose speed anymore. What is gonna hold me to on? Listen, team, look. On the plane engine is making me very nervous. There is something I don't want to see. <laughs> 